Hi everybody. Well, we all need help. And that's what I thought I'd discuss today, help in the Gurdjieff work and what Gurdjieff has to say about help. And he says, he has a little thing, that, well, actually this was from In Search of the Miraculous. Help is all around us. God help me to help God. So it's a, like a two-way thing that we need to help God. God helps us or his endlessness as it is in the Gurdjieff writings or the divine source or whatever you believe in if we can help god god will help us so we can also help each other by helping god and helping ourselves so also from life is real only then when i am gurdjieff says that man receives all his possibilities from on high so everything's there, it's there waiting for us. It's on high, whether it's in our higher selves, which is something we're trying to get in touch with. If we can get in touch with our higher selves, our higher selves is always sending stuff down to us. But usually we're closed to that receptivity. We're not listening to it. We're not looking out for it. We're too caught up in our everyday world and we're not centered enough to receive them, help that help from our higher selves. Our higher selves know what's good for us, what's bad for us, what's right for us. And it wants they want to help. It wants to help. I say the higher centers, the higher selves, because there's a higher intellectual center, a higher emotional center. And the higher version of ourselves wants to talk to us. But I was going to read this bit from, which I found interesting, from Henri Tracol, which is not someone I know a lot about, but it, I think this paragraph from him kind of explains everything that we're all going through. I'll do it this side so I can see the light. So Henri Trecol says, and yet by dint of trying, failing and trying again, I come to the point where I realise how much I am in need of help. And help is there. Am I so blind and deaf as to ignore it? It offers itself in many guises testimonies of all kinds, sacred books, spiritual ways. Take, for instance, Buddhist asceticism, the way of the Buddha towards awakening. The Buddha, from the root Bud, B-U-D-H, to awaken means the awakened one. It is thus a designation applied to one who attains spiritual realization, likened to an arousing or an awakening. He reaches the path by the intensity, the constancy and the concentration of the will. Then of the energy, then of the spirit, then of investigation and last of a heroic spirit. And thus attaining these heroic qualities, he is able, O oh disciples, to achieve liberation, to achieve awakening. In my own effort towards concentration, help is also offered by nature itself, life itself. Whenever I can remain permeable to the deeply revealing impressions that it never ceases to provide. Therefore, my only concern should be to try and stay attentive to the wordless call from that which is always there, waiting for recognition, recognition. This might prove to be the key, not to try to reach for, but just to come back to what is, to my real self. So recognition. We're bringing ourselves back to our real selves. And I find it interesting when he says about how, when he goes along on his path, help comes in, you know, mysterious ways. I have a bit of a book angel, and I hope that book angel carries on being there whenever I need something or a certain book or books appear that I read and suddenly realise I needed them at that moment. Other people have perhaps people angels, like angels send right people in their paths when they're needed. But it's whether we recognise that they're there then or that book's there to help us. And we, like he's saying there, he has to do the effort, put the effort in. And even Buddha had to when he was doing his works, becoming enlightened. He was having to go through the role of, what was it, um, in finding the energy. We need the energy to do this, the spirit, the willpower to do this, investigation, and last of a heroic spirit. We all want to be have that heroic spirit that takes us forward so we can contact our higher selves and then do the right thing and work with the divine, help the divine. But he says here, try not to reach for, 
but just to come back to what is to my real self and I know I used to be so eager I think sometimes I was so eager that it just wasn't coming my way and then other times I'd relax ponder on it all and then answers would start coming I think I've mentioned before how I was waiting for the ta-da and there is no ta-da it comes along slowly subtly is the is the word that I want to use there so from in search of the miraculous in order to be able to help people one must first first learn to help oneself only a conscious egoist can help people and that all comes back to the old know thyself you know we all want to help everybody else we all want to do something do we want to be a hero do we want that clap on the back to say well done or are we doing it because we know that we're trying to develop ourselves and if we can work work on ourselves first then we can go out and teach others or show others don't have to necessarily teach them we can be examples for other people but it's doing it for ourselves first you can only help others when you've helped yourself and I've seen throughout the world and I think I've said it in other shows how I've seen people so desperate to help other people because they're so broken in themselves that they just don't want to face what they have to go through with their own lives so by helping others it makes them feel better yeah it might be well and good but you know it's not helping them develop their own selves if they're not working on themselves some people don't want to take help that's fine if they don't want to take the help because they want to do it themselves and have that <laughs> i know he said heroic spirit but you know be their own hero well i wish them luck and i hope that they can pull this off on their own but as Gurdjieff says in this work we need others to help us through it so also from in search of the miraculous this is page 360 the difficulties of the way we saw the indispensability of great knowledge of immense efforts and of help such as none of us either could or had the right to count upon each step required an effort each step needed help and we can help ourselves obviously with all this as well you know i find reading the books can be very much hard work and i have to put a lot of effort in to read beelzebub's towers and each time i read it again i get something different from it and a new helpful bit of data comes along from it that suddenly makes sense inside so that i can continue it on with what i know already and as i've said in other ones about knowledge we ponder on the knowledge creates the wisdom and also then maybe we'd be wise when wise enough to see when people are offering help or books are offering help or wise enough for us to be able to offer help so views from the real world i've got a few quotes from here so this is in the introduction i think it was gene de Salzman that said this the ideas are a summons a summons towards another world a call from one who knows and is able to show us the way but the transformation of the human being requires something more. It can only be achieved if there is a real meeting between the conscious force which descends and the total commitment which answers it. This brings about a fusion. So that force coming from above to help us, we've got to connect with. We've got to recognize it and use it and be grateful for it as well you know another very important thing be grateful for everything we receive which comes our way to help us on our path so very important energy that is created when we're grateful for things so views from the real world page 50. a man can develop his hidden capacities and powers only by cleaning his machine of the dirt that has clogged it in the course of his life in order to see anything of this one has to look from the outside and for this mutual help is necessary and again this comes down you know i know we can't get to groups at the moment many of us are still in lockdown but working in groups when we start seeing how other people are and then we see that in ourselves we can start working on ourselves it all helps each other we all help each other and also being in groups creates energies you know when we're on our own it's quite hard to get that energy up and going but when we're in a group helping each other on that energy changes and becomes more more of the finer energies of course if it's used consciously because there is the other thing of you know you will meet people in groups with a, on a bit of an ego vibe but you'll become aware of them kind of people 
maybe you can help them as well so they can see it in themselves it's all what we can try and do and look at ourselves our insides from the outside as he says here so views from the real world page 241 you must think in a new way you must find your possible aim this you cannot do alone you must call on a friend who can help you especially two friends who can help each other to revalue their values and i've had you know from my life many different people over times and some people want to tell me it's their way and no other way some people laugh at what i do and poo poo it and you know aren't interested in any kind of development and just want to live their life day by day you know in the rat race whatever let them do that as well are they helping us maybe they're helping us to look at ourselves and to make sure that we want that aim that we're really working at it and you know kind of um emphasizes what we're trying to get at and trying to do and not distract us from it instead and not try and make us feel oh yes this is rubbish i don't know why i do it they're not doing it we don't need to copy other people like that we need to believe in ourselves and believe in the work and believe in the different traditions and the re religious ways of how we can develop ourselves to become real i So views from the real world, page 76. Oh, I meant to read this one first, sorry. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We cannot change ourselves. We can only modify ourselves a little, but we can be changed with help from outside. And he carries on to say on the same page, theory of esotericism is that mankind consists of two circles, a larger outer circle and a small circle of instructed and understanding people at the center. Real instruction, which alone can change us, can only come from this center and the aim of this teaching is to help us prepare ourselves to receive such instructions and this is going on about the exoteric circle and the ex esoteric circle and the exoteric circle is all the people that aren't really interested in this kind of thing and just live in their lives you know the ones that i was just saying about that sometimes poo poo us for doing things like this and laugh at us or ridicule us and try and make us feel you know that we're wasting our time but then they've got no kernel of spirituality in them or maybe they have and they don't want to face it because as we've said before on these shows it takes a lot to look at yourself and uh recognize our bad points and our good points and you know whether we're worthy of doing this you know our own inner life can sometimes try and uh talk us out of this let alone people from the exterior set, uh, circle of people so again, it's all down to how you feel, how what you want to do. You've got to really need it, really desire it. As I've said in other shows, well, not me as well, just when I've read the quotes of Spensky and Gurdjieff and not all say this, you've got to want it, you've got to desire it. So view from the real world, page 91. Take a small thing which you are now not able to do and make this your aim, your God. Make the breaking of a small habit your aim. And then there was a question to Gurdjieff. My worst fault is talking too much. Would talking, would trying not to talk so much be a good task? Oh, I had this in the task once. And Gurdjieff replies, this is a very good task, but it is a big thing, not small, I promise you. If you achieve this, even if I'm not here, I will know about your achievement and will so send help so that you will know what to do next. And I know, as I said in the last show, or whenever I did this one about that quote, the, even though Gurdjieff's passed over or gone on to another realm, wherever he is, I think that if we can send our prayers and requests out to him, he will come back to us if we're sincere enough. If we really want to do this work, he wants to help people in the work. And he will, I don't know, send something to you. Only you will know what when it comes. <laughs> so page 114 from Views from the Real World. We never accomplish what we intend doing in big and little things. We go to sea and return to dough. Talking about the octave. Similarly, self-development is impossible without additional force from without and also from within. So on this octave that we're going up, as I said before, there is a point, do, re, mi, fa, Something could happen that could try and 
block us or halt us you know it might be our own lack of will could be something from the outside but we need that push to go forward that bit of help to make us continue in our work and the energy will grow again and be even better even stronger working on us because we've passed over that step many things you need that step to get over you take that first step to start that can be hard work just taking the first step first step gets you you get through and you start going along it's like oh this is really good and then when you start thinking that bang something happens that kind of stops it or distracts you from it but you need that outside force to or that outside help maybe that's the time to call for mr gurdjieff i don't know you all know what to do when that happens to keep you going and on track oh yeah because he goes on to say sorry i meant to read this next now you must work on yourself you are dough when you get to me you can meet help so that help is there you've got to be aware of it though when it comes like i was saying at the beginning of the show you know things will come to you books people suggestions a sudden i don't know a billboard will suddenly flash something that means something to you i don't know but you've got to be aware of it when it happens and then use it to go forward and then from views from the real world page 194 if you help others, you will be helped, perhaps tomorrow, perhaps in a 100 years, but you will be helped. Nature must pay off the debt. It is a mathematical law and all life is mathematics. So karma will always return what you do. And I've found, and I know other people have said this, so I'm okay to say this, that sometimes when you're doing this work, as you're going along, karma comes back at you pretty quickly. I know people that don't do the work and they do something, let's say they do something bad, karma's gonna come back to them, but it doesn't come back for years maybe. Where people in the work seem to, that karma comes back pretty instantaneously, maybe even the next day, just to remind you, give you that shock, whether it's good or bad karma, that you're getting either punished or rewarded for, it does come back quicker because you've got that finer energy working in you, that finer development, you're getting your centers aligned and so, you're more in tune with the universe. And being in tune with the universe means the results will come round quicker than those that are not in tune with the universe. So stay tuned, people, in yourselves. Peace and out.